Fifteen years later, the jubilation seemed a distant dream. The blaze at Windsor Castle in November 1992 symbolized the difficulties engulfing the House of Windsor. Seeing these flames leaping into the sky was just horrific and frightening. There was one moment, I think, when one did think that the whole place was going to go on fire. The royal family was under siege because of its cost and the lifestyles of its junior members. Worst of all, the marriages of three of the Queen's children were failing painfully and in public. And now this. It was the most terrible thing to watch. But as you would expect, she was stoic. She doesn't like to show her emotions. That's not the way she is. And I understand that. I can remember the Queen being stood in the middle of the courtyard I could see how upset she was. And uh, I would have loved to have gone up and said, you know, never mind, and put my arm around her. But you know darn well that you can't. So this, this poor woman is stood there watching her home go up. And all of us are feeling what she must be going through. And obviously wanted to comfort her, but no one, but no one had the courage to go and do it. Although this woman's very powerful and much loved, it must be a very lonely sort of position to be in. By now, she'd served 40 years on the throne. But when the government suggested the repairs should be paid for from public funds, there was a storm of protest in the media. I have to admit, I completely misjudged the way people would react. I was astonished at the press campaign. Windsor Castle belongs to the Queen, therefore she should pay for it. Well, I suppose in a sense, will you, uh, Windsor Castle belongs to the Queen, of course it does. Uh, but the Queen can't dispose of it, she can't sell it. And I thought, it, frankly, it was a very miserable and mealy-mouthed response. It just seemed so mean-spirited and out of character for the British nation. Just four days later, in a remarkably personal speech to the City of London, the Queen acknowledged both the public mood and her own pain. New institution, city, monarchy, whatever, should expect to be free from the scrutiny of those who give it their loyalty and support, not to mention those who don't. And that scrutiny can be just as effective if it is made with a touch of gentleness, good humour and understanding. It was taken that it was rather an emotional speech. In some ways the circumstances were emotional, but the, the catch in the Queen's voice was, was actually more to do with a sore throat. 1992 is not a year on which I shall look back with undiluted pleasure. <clears throat> in the words of one of my more sympathetic correspondents, it has turned out to be an annus horribilis. The Latin phrase came from one of her former courtiers. He'd written to commiserate over the way her 40th year on the throne was turning out. As a classical scholar, I ought to have known that the, um, if I wanted to say what a horrid year, it, was, it would be really annus horrendous rather than annus horribilis, which would mean, would mean a year that uh, was capable of scaring you, which perhaps not quite the same meaning. Actually, the next few years were rather scary. As a palace official said to me, it was one thing after another. The breakdown in the Prince and Princess of Wales's marriage was played out in the newspapers day after day. Private phone calls were published, and then on television, each of them admitted adultery. Finally, they were divorced, as were the Duke and Duchess of York. And the Queen, the Queen stuck to her routine, revealing very little in public. She's a very strong woman, 
I think people perhaps don't realize quite how strong she is. And I think the way she behaved in those years uh, saved the monarchy from far worse problems than otherwise they might have faced.